Hi everyone, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my channel. Today I've got a real treat for you. We're going out to the forest with a, an old mentor of mine. His name is Max Squires. He's a retired forester. He spent his entire career managing this forest I'm standing on right now. It used to be called the Spruce River Forest. It's now the Black Spruce Forest. We're going to have a fun day in the bush. He's going to take me to a site and we're going to look at uh, forest succession, a black spruce stand that's fallen apart and uh, what's growing there now. So Mac, why don't you tell us who you are and what this site is all about? Well, I'm uh, Mac Squires. I'm a, a retired professional forester. Uh, I worked with uh, Abbott Price between uh, 1978 and 1997 when I retired. When I came here to Thunder Bay in 1980, I took an interest in finding out as much as I could about the natural forest. And I checked out a few stands that looked like they had a, an interesting history and would probably have an interesting future. I was familiar with black spruce fire stands from my previous experiences, and I wanted to know what was going to happen to a particular black spruce stand over time in Ontario, where I had not gained any experience yet. So I chose a black spruce stand that happened to be standing right here in the early 1980s. And uh, I said, okay, I'm going to watch this one. So practically every year from then to today, I've been into this stand. Well, what used to be a black spruce stand right here, you can't find a black spruce tree today. What? What's happened? Well, there are the black spruce trees. They're on the ground all around us, covered with moss and well decayed by now. But the trees that are standing around us are mostly balsam firs and occasional trembling aspen. The aspen are a minor part of the stand. And the balsam firs range in age from, looking up, I'd say some of them are probably almost as old as the first day I was here about 35 years old. As you move down the slope from where we are, you will see more spruce trees. And the slope is facing west to southwest. The trees that were on the top of the slope were the first to go down. The wind, they were more exposed to the wind and they toppled over occasionally and sometimes in small patches. As you move down the slope, the wind had less play on the older spruce trees, and some of them are still standing. And as you get to the bottom of the slope, which is a, a deep peat, waterlogged, there are still a lot of the original trees, and it's just really started to fall down. So we've moved down the slope here and we're getting into a more open condition of the balsam fir because some of the black spruce have more recently fallen. So they've created openings in which the balsam fir are now taken full advantage of and we're getting some smaller ones still coming in and uh, taking over. But all around you can see the scattered fallen spruce trees the ones we're looking at here, they've been down now for about 10 years or more. So it's a, a changing situation for sure. But it's a picture of what happens to a black spruce stand in the boreal forest of northwestern Ontario. The black spruce reached their over maturity, we'll call it, something like I am, and uh, they've reached gone well beyond their peak of activity, health, and they decided to lie down and, well, call it quits. So balsam fir is always there in those stands, almost always, I should say, ready to take over. Eventually, they do creep in and uh, what was a formerly a black spruce stand becomes in time a balsam fir stand, unless we get another fire, or it's like it's clear cut, 
which foresters like uh, me during my career tried to, we knew we could never fully imitate fire, but we tried our best to do, regenerate the tree species and plants that a fire would have regenerated. So if this were clear cut and black spruce were planted, it would very much look very much like a black spruce fire stand today. In the absence of a cut or the absence of another fire, this is going to be a balsam fir stand and will remain a balsam fir stand until spruce budworm or something takes out the balsam fir and it's again going to regenerate as balsam fir. So Mac, was this uh, like 100% spruce when you first... Uh... There was an occasional balsam fir tree standing uh, because it's right on the edge of the burn. Uh, just over about a hundred meters from here was a mixed stand of balsam fir, trembling aspen, white birch. And so seed had gotten into the burnt site at an early stage and a few balsam fir. So if you get deeper into the stand, you, you would have seen fewer balsam fir. But even in the pure stand of black spruce, I don't know how the balsam fir seed get in there, but uh, they do eventually. I'm not sure, but I suspect birds do something <laughs> to <laughs> <Yeah>. that. Um, <laughs> yeah. all, all literature I've read says that the bird, uh, bird's guts destroy the seeds, but I'm sure some of them get through. Because you're right, uh, a fire cleans the site. There's no seed left except for the what falls, and something's got to bring it in. Yep. Yeah. Or squirrels. Yeah. Squirrels yeah. good. Uh, yeah, I sometimes suspect squirrels, but I've never seen the evidence that squirrels yeah. harvest balsam fir cones. Yeah, you see that, I've, and <clears throat> just just in walking in here, we I've seen a couple spots where squirrels have harvested the spruce cones. Yes, and they've stuck them up on a tree. I think it's their main feed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but they're not after the the fir cones for some no. reason. And I can appreciate that because when the fir cones are mature, I don't like handling them. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> A sadistic supervisor once had me pick a bushel of black uh, balsam fir cones. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get them off my hands. <laughs> so the next stop will be down in the uh, feet area. Okay. So Mac, we've come down the slope and uh, the stand has opened up a little bit. We're starting to see spruce trees. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing a lot of spruce trees, and a lot of them are down on the ground. Uh, in the past five, ten years, this part of the stand has only now started to come down. As you can see in the background behind me here, there's still a pretty close stand of black spruce. And that's on peat. We're still a little bit upslope where we're standing here, but uh, as you move down here about another uh, 25, 30 meters, you're getting into some uh, peat accumulation. That's uh, old dead sphagnum mosses and uh, living sphagnum mosses, uh, which the black spruce tend to enjoy. So uh, you've got a complete history here of a stand fall down from the top of the slope down to the bottom. And right here where we are at the bottom, there's less wind play, and that's why the trees can still be standing. But uh, now the roots are starting to get rotten, and uh, so they're losing their root support, and they're just topping over in a lighter wind. It's a little wetter here. I see some lab tea in here. Yeah, and there's quite a quite a log pile over there. Yeah. But over my uh, over my career, I've enjoyed taking various people in here. Uh, I've uh, with one other individual, uh, Kenneth Armson and I. We used to take uh, classroom teachers from across Canada in here to show them how the black spruce stands gradually over time convert to uh, balsam fir. So as you might have guessed, I had a fantastic time today out in the field with Max Squires. Um, he's obviously extremely knowledgeable and it's just a pleasure to spend uh, some quality time with him out in the field. It's really rare that someone spends that kind of time in their career and later in their retirement uh, following sites and trying to understand what's going on with the ecology of the site. And Mac is also an artist. He does uh, some really unique uh, ink drawings on birch bark. This is a sampling of his work, just, just beautiful stuff. 
and he's also a writer. He writes um, for the local Field Naturalist newsletter and he's written many, many articles for our local newspaper uh, trying to educate people about ecology and forestry and, and what goes on out in the forest. And in 2017, Mac uh, produced this book. I promised I would uh, put a plug in for him at the end of the video. This is called Dynamic Forest, Man versus Nature in the Boreal Forest. I highly recommend this. The title is obviously a bit of a play to get your attention because Mac is certainly not against nature. He uses his long career in uh, forestry in Canada to teach you about the forest, but also weaves in some excellent little uh, anecdotes about his experience in the forest industry. I've got to give this another read because I've forgotten some of the details of those stories, but one I do recollect, uh, early in his career he was in a logging camp and it was a unionized environment. They were having a, a meeting and uh, he tells a tale of how he asked the wrong kinds of questions in that environment and uh, a couple of large gentlemen grabbed him by either elbow and dragged him outside to uh, have a discussion with him. So those are the kinds of stories that you're going to get out of Mac and he uses those stories in this book to also educate the reader about forestry and forest ecology. So I highly recommend this. Uh, it's a great little read and uh, very, very entertaining. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please hit like, share, and subscribe. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.